Hey, you don't hear? Okay. <coughs> Back with another live stream. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right. So I've been uh, doing tests and talking and haven't been coughing. So, you know, when you go live, that's, I guess that's the rule that you have to cough. I have to cough. All right. So are we working okay? I, uh, was, uh, Okay, well, it took me a, while, a good while to get things working. Oh, I had my, all my cameras working, but then I realized the audio from the camera 3 didn't work. And I finally figured out it's in the audio settings uh, in the new version. They were, I don't know, maybe some settings that weren't in the old version, but whatever, they it, they just weren't turned on. If you see, if you go here, I'm not going to turn it on. Uh, I'm not going to do the setting, but if you click right there, you can uh, turn them on. Click a checkbox and turn each one of these inputs on and off. It's like the main audio settings area it takes you to. So, um, well, I'm going to get straight to what I was I was trying to hurry up and get to this. Uh, the, um, I get my long stick here and uh, the, um, AS Rock, where I was running the Bed Defender. Uh, oh on my desk vet defender virus skin that's the way this morning's been everything every which way has gone crazy um okay so bed defender you know i let it run i started it at six or seven in the morning yesterday scanning my backup drive and i'm scanning around three terabyte of data so you know i knew it would take a long well i scanned it once with the uh Dell 6000 laptop, which is only a 1.7 gigahertz single core with 2 gig of RAM. So I thought, well, maybe the, uh, surely the uh, AS Rock with 8 core, 8 gig of RAM will finish it a heck of a lot quicker because it took um, two and a half days and two nights to scan that drive on that. Well, you know what? I was trying to remember. I don't remember leaving that. I said that. I keep saying that, but I don't remember leaving that laptop running all night for two nights. I might have done it on the Lenovo i5, but uh, I do remember uh, the time, the time, how long it took. I, I'm pretty sure about that. I have it somewhere. I think I wrote it down or it's in my videos. I know that. Yeah, I think the time, what I was scanning, I guess what I was scanning on the laptop was just it's, uh, I, it wasn't this laptop, right, because it's not the one that's been affected. It was the Dell 1525 laptop that I scanned. Uh, with Bit Defender and Clam AV, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I think um, you know. No, I don't know. I'm really. I swear, I plugged in my 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 uh, big old backup drum and scanned it on the Dell 6000 laptop, and I was surprised that it. I just started doing it, and then I thought, well, let's just let it run because it's doing okay. I, yeah, but did I let it run for two days, two and a half days, and two nights? Where would I? Because see, the thing is, if I did that, I would. I, I can't. It would get too hard if I shut the lid and, and slid it up in my rack over there. Um, and I don't remember taking it off the tray and setting it over here. So I don't know. Now I guess I'm just too confused to tell a story. Okay, so um, point back to what I'm really trying to do here. Okay, I started up the virus scan. It ran all day. It ran. Uh, I went to bed about 7 yesterday evening, and it was still running when I went to bed. And uh, and, and I was worried about the AS Rock making too much heat and making too much noise because it's over there close to my bed, but it didn't bother me. I don't know. It's not as loud as I th thought it was. Uh, I, didn't hear, I didn't hear it hardly at all. I could hear it, but it sounded like an air conditioner was running in the background or something. That's what it sounded like. Uh, it reminded me of like old days when they used to have a window unit, you know. And the, but it like it's in the other room. It's not, you know, well, if you have it in the room with you, it's loud. You know, I don't think I could stand that nowadays. But um, uh, didn't bother me really, other than of course when I, I woke up several times to go to the bathroom and stuff, and I knew it was on. You know, and all that. I was tempted to look at, I'll turn on the monitor and look at it, but I didn't because I knew it would wake me up too much. But I would glance over at that on the. There's a blue light that on the, uh, kind of an on indicator and a. And a and it also blinks when there's traffic on the on the drive, you know, uh, 
traffic uh, right indicator lights, what I'm trying to say, like like on your computer, you know, same basic thing. <clears throat> and uh, so I'd glance at it, and I would see it was just still blinking, so I knew it was being accessed because I sat here and looked at the program, and I saw it was scanning real hard and fast, and I could see that blue light blinking, so I knew that. Uh, I knew it for sure. But as you can see, even in this picture, there's no... This is just the desktop for Team uh, Bitdefender. There's no application in the window. So when I got up this morning, first thing I, I did go ahead and turn on the monitor and glance, look at it, and I was like, where's the application? <laughs> and so that started off the day with a big disappointment. You know, I hate running things for that long and then having something fail. So uh, I kind of looked around. Uh, well, I looked at the X session errors, and uh, let me go ahead. What I was going to do, let's see, yeah. I can't remember if you double click or single click to open things on here. Let's wait for a minute and see. I'm going to go ahead and open. It's got Team Viewer on it. And what it does, I found out, is it downloads it and uh, then just starts it up for you. Uh, so, but I but I clicked it. Uh, well, the last time I was using it, I clicked it three times in a row because it took too long and I thought it wasn't working. And uh, Team Viewer, uh, they're monitoring that. How many times you click on it? Evidently, and I got I got a message in my. I went to go try to, I went to go try to install Team Viewer 13 on my Lenovo i5 because I thought it'd be better to have the newer version. And it said, "Oh, we think we're using it for an uh, commercial purposes," and that's you know you have to pay to do that. And I was like, "What the heck?" And um, and it wouldn't let me use it. And so then I thought, "Well, I'm not quit using." And so I don't have it. On, I don't have it installed on my Lenovo i5. But there's so many times when, I mean, I could probably try. Actually, there's no. Uh, I think there's an. In, see, there's no. I don't know what version. This is a live. It's a Linux system because I know because it's an LX, XFCE desktop. But there's no. Um, you know, like uh, Yum Extender, DNF Extender, or any of the other apps for. I don't know which version. I could find out, but. See if it, I don't think it tells you in this task manager, which, uh, yeah, this is a, yeah, the XFCE uh, system monitor. It's a pretty good one, but, you know, you can't just go in here and find out. What's that? Application finder. So you can't just go in here and find out what, I don't think, what version of, uh, you can change what's showing in the screen. But... <coughs> Yeah, I, uh, what version of, uh, like, it, I, I don't even know if this is a Debane-based. It, it it seems really lightweight, so it probably might be a Debane-based distro with XFCE de desktop. Um, so, uh, <coughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I, can't always, I can't remember. I mean, I could just start typing commands and see in the terminal window. But what I'm trying to say is I'm really going in circles. I could install, if it was uh, Fedora-based, which I'm sure it's not, actually, uh, because Fedora uses too many resources, or really it's not, it, you know, it wouldn't work well on older machines, so they're probably not using Fedora. So it might be Debane, but a lot of times they use uh, Arch Linux or some of the other ones. Ubuntu is real popular. They, Ubuntu has always been a resource hog in its normal state, but people learn how to, like, strip it down and make it lightweight. <clears throat> Basically, I don't know why they bother. Why don't they just use Debane? It's already lightweight. That's what Ubuntu is built on. But uh, they do that a lot. Uh, of course, if they know how to do it. Then more power to them, I guess. But, uh, yeah, there's nothing. It, it, it might not even let you install anything. Like, I can open the terminal. Uh, but anyway, that would be a lot, a lot of work. So I can just... Uh, Let's click right there. That'll open it up. Okay, downloading Team Viewer. There we go. <clears throat> on, on all Linux distros, it seems uh, some it's kind of hit and miss whether or not when there is something on the desktop, whether or not it'll take when you click it. And some of them are set up for single click by default. Some of them for double click. And then, especially the ones that are double click, Fedora is double click, and the main is too, I think. But <clears throat> in general, um, you see it went away, but it, it it'll come back up in a minute. When it gets uh, done downloading it, it'll open the app up. And it doesn't take real long. It's just you don't know what's going on, you know, uh, in that time you think it's not working. 
So that's what caused me to click on it again, you know. And uh, I thought it was, I thought it had crashed. Now, see, there we go. Here it is. It had crashed or something or whatever. I didn't realize it was downloading because I hadn't really, that message doesn't stay up long and I hadn't read it. So accept the terms. And in a minute, the next one will open up. And, uh, okay, now I'm ready to, uh, I'm going to have to write that number down so that I can log in. Now, I'm going to have to go back on my machine. Team Viewer. Uh, Bitdefender. I'm pretty sure it changes that login ID every time. Uh, they, it does on everything else. And the password for sure, it always does the password. I used to write them down thinking I could, you know, I'd have those IDs. Now, if you don't reboot the machine, the ID doesn't change. <clears throat> I've done that. Um, actually, the more I think about it, it may use the same ID. I don't have one of my notes with it written on there handy. I have a, several sticky notes with Tink Beer <coughs> uh, IDs written on it. And if it's installed, then I think it stays the same and just the password changes. I mean, triple check this, double check it, or whatever. Okay. <coughs> Now, um, guess I'll just minimize it for when I get in there. Now I'll go back to my machine, and I'm going to have to. I haven't got it on there. I was really kind of thinking I wouldn't do it, but right away I'm in a spot where I really want to connect to another machine. And uh, all grievances aside against tracking and everything, uh, I think this will be the <laughs> simplest way to do it. Um but I think I'll try getting just, I saw the portable version. And I know I had, I put 13 on one of the machines. I think it was a Dell 6000 laptop and it couldn't connect to uh, TeamViewer 12. So um, I'll go ahead and try to get the portable version of TeamViewer 12. And I don't want to install it on a machine if I don't have to because I don't, Number one, I don't want them. I don't know what all they're tracking. I mean, it's a remote desktop app. They could track anything they want to. <laughs> they could watch your desktop. They could see your keys being typed. They could see everything. Um, I mean, it has more functionality than just a remote desktop. It has file transfer. It has. I'm basically, I'm sure it could be even used as a key logger besides the, the viewer and everything else and a control interface. I mean, they write it. They could do whatever they want with it, right? So, um, and since it's proprietary instead of open source, and there's nobody checking on what they're doing but them, so I, I, ever since I learned about open source and got into it, I really do trust open source software much more than, uh, because even if somebody does something nefarious in there, other people are going to end up finding out, and, and there's millions of people, you know, that know how to program and that do look into the code, so that's my, you know, idea. Let's see. Oops. Good. <laughs> oh, it searches from the... I do not... I, you know, you do, You never used to be able to uh, search from the address bar, and so I don't do that. I don't like doing that. Uh, I guess used to you could turn it off and, and just not have it do that, but I think now what happens is you can, you can put your little searcher up there on the right, and I'll do that when I get back to setting up my machine. Anyway, it searched for good, but uh, I've always learned. I learned many years ago to be very careful what you put in the address bar because you can end up going somewhere by accident if you mistype your URL or something. You go somewhere that's uh, malware. So I usually always search first and then click on the links that look like the right thing. So anyway, that's my two cents on that. Let's see, Team Viewer. Viewer uh, US. I don't have any add ons, so I can't scan the links or anything. But um, that would be it. <clears throat> yeah.
Yeah, it looks like the right website. Okay, where's the download button? I don't want to just click on download now. I want to go to quick support. Yeah, that's, oh, that's different. Receiving support. So you could download that and somebody could help you. And it has a, and it, well, on my phones, I don't think they have a fast enough Wi-Fi. It works, but it only works for maybe 10 minutes max, and then it slows. It gets so slow you can't use it. And I used another one called uh, something on my desktop. You had to use it on Windows, though. My something. Anyway, I can't even remember the name of the app, but I used it on. It would work between Windows machines and and, uh, and Android. <clears throat> and for Android, it's really to me very desirable to have something like that because I can't see that my little screens, my little four inch screens on my phone. Okay, I see. Oh, they've got. I don't know what Biz IT Brain or Montis is. Montis, I remember that. I've heard. I remember that. I don't know what it is, but I remember the name. Somebody, I think it's monitoring stuff. Okay, so I don't have any of my uh, links. So the last time I was on here, I found the page for first place. I found the download page. Um, I guess I should have just well, if I maybe if you click. I don't know the last time I did just click on here. Oh, maybe I clicked on learn more. But anyway, there's a page where you can download the older versions in here. That's what I'm looking for. Because I know the newer one won't. I don't think it'll even connect to the one I have up and running. I don't. I think it's going to be, well, I know it ain't 13. It's probably 11 or 12. This is just telling you how great it is. It does work, work really well, and I've been I had gotten where I used it a lot, but then yes, the app for Android, Motorola it uses it on it works on all kinds of phones. Oh, I hate when that uh, all web pages do that to me now. It drives me insane. And well, that time I think it's because I accidentally missed the little bar you know the little blue dragger but but other times it's while you're dragging they're jumping and going crazy and you can't read you, you don't get a smooth scrolling experience and unless you go all the way to the bottom and then go back up and work your way down <coughs> so especially okay let's see um download the latest version let's see if i can find Older, if I could type. Let's see. It says it'll run on XP. I hadn't. I guess I've tried it, but I do have my XP virtual machine. Of course, it's not installed on here right now any of those applications installed when I wasn't looking for there's the downloads page link wow now let me put that in a folder before I lose it again I'm just I just have a software Linux folder already made I'll put it in there now then 13. I guess if I go to TeamViewer 13 Preview for Linux, TeamViewer 13 Full Version, I don't know, maybe if I, I, I think that may be just going to download it. Let's see. Well, let's, let's see. Didn't so far. Here we go. Previous versions, there we go, finally. Okay, that's what I'm wanting because I already put it, it wouldn't work. Okay, 
13 won't work with, or even with 12, much less. There we go. 12, 11, 13. But what also what I wanted was uh, portable. There, team viewer portable. That's what I want. So here that is. That's Windows anyway. I don't Windows. I want Linux. I'm always popping up this cookies crap. I'm so sick of seeing that. I'm not accepting anything. They already do it anyway, and if you say accept, then what more are they going to do? Why are they popping that up? Well, because there's some laws made about it all. So, um, and, you know, a whole world all over the EU and the U.S., you know. And so if you just click, oh, I accept, then you, you don't know what you're accepting. There's going to be more tracking, more invasion into your computer. And <clears throat> so I don't ever click on those. And Sometimes you can hit escape and they'll go away, and sometimes they won't, no matter what you do. Maybe if I click in on it somewhere, nope. A lot of them, you can at least make them go away. Okay. Where's the portable? Well, I guess I didn't go to portable yet. So I'm going to go to portable. Oh. Yeah, but that's probably going to be, that's Windows, so I don't want that. I thought I saw a portable version for Linux. There's 12. Okay, Deb, RPM. Oh, it's the same as it was. Yeah, you download the... Uh, I don't have a way to scan this stuff. I don't have... Uh, I don't have my... You know, I don't want to download a darn thing without scanning it. So, uh, before I go any further, it is not too hard. This... Uh, of course, this is what started all my troubles, but um, when the fire, uh, malware troubles, when uh, <clears throat> okay, there's VT Zilla, that's what I want. I was wanting, uh, I had VT Zilla for years, uh, virus total scanner, uh, link scanner, and uh, when they went to the new Firefox Quantum version, it was gone. I couldn't find it. It might have just been it was there. Uh, I don't know if they were by it hadn't you know rewritten their add-on yet or if it was there and I couldn't find it because I realized it's really it's actually I could always remember virus total but I couldn't remember the VT Zilla so I searched for virus total it's like on the second or third page and all these and the fake ones the, the ones the uh, that uh, the ones that try to look like virus total but the one that from add on browser.com it pointed to, that has malware uh, popping up tab tabs opening up on your on your browser after you install it reason I'm reformatting three machines um, it's what I got and it did work it, it point it, it its code points to the virus total scanners and uses virus total scanners uh, so it really tricked me I mean it was just so anyway I'm going to add it now I think I can just start using it yeah there it is right there I don't think there's actually anything I need to set in it either oh let's see Scan downloads with virus total. Scan documents. Yes, there is something I need to see. Show send to virus total prompt when downloading. Now, if I turned that on be the last before and it interrupted and broke my downloads, so I won't do that. But it, it'll do it automatically. It'll go ahead and download them, but it'll also be scanning them, and then you can look at the results before you open the file. Send the downloads. Pause. Yeah. Oh, pause downloads. Yeah. Actually, I don't want the prompt. I just want it to do it automatically. Okay. There we go. Save. I'll leave that open until I'm sure I'm getting what I want. Okay. So <clears throat> let's get to the one that it should be portable. Yeah, see, it's still going to – I should be able to just open that up and run it. And at least it won't be running in the background because what if, from what I think I remember – See, the Team Viewer is not actually, it doesn't actually run on Linux. They used Wine, the, the Windows emulator, and it sets up Wine to always, just for that, it's not, don't put it on your system in general. I used to use it, but it got to where it really didn't support a lot of apps. And so I quit using it and just went to using Windows Virtual Machines. That worked, it's easier, works better that way, although it does use more resources. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, it's done. So let's go, there's two reports there. Um, so anyway, I, I, it hit me, well, when I was thinking about this, this morning, about what, how I would do this, 
But you know, I think that Team Viewer Wine process runs, uh, now whether you're using it or not. So what it, what is it doing? You know, uh, obviously it's tracking how many times you uh, download on every machine you got, not just this is a live Bit Defender live system that it downloaded it. You know, so they're so invasive in not not just your machine that you have it installed on, but your whole network. So. Um, Talk myself out of using it again. Um, sometimes those don't load when you click on them. You can just click reload and they'll show you. Okay, so that's all clean. That's good. Which that's the Tar GZ. This one's the one that you could used to could run in portable mode, so we found out. What's this? That is same one. I don't know why there's two links to doing the same thing. Okay, so it worked like it should, so I'll close my extra window there. Okay, now I'm not going to download anything else until I find out if I need it. Um, but I will put that in there. Let's see. I don't want that anyway, so. Um, I know this because I've done it. I've done it in the past. Uh, that one there will run in portable mode. Um, but yeah, I don't want to install that. Um, if I... If I as a matter of fact, if I, and rather than install it, I'll go try to put KRFB on the other machine or just use the camera to show what I'm doing. I mean, all I'm trying to do is show what I'm doing anyway. So, uh, I sidetracked too easy. Okay, Team Viewer. Let's see. I guess I'll go to my. I'll put it on my home directory so I can run it there. And I'll just make me a folder to put it in. Uh, Team Viewer 12. I think I'll change the underscore to just a dash. <coughs> Actually, I'm going to make it large. I'm going to make it a capital T so I can find it quick. They put rename, side note, they put rename all the way over there, and it's always used to be right in here. And it drives me nuts. I'll accidentally click on make directory or click delete because, you know, you get in the habit of. This is I386. I don't let's see if it'll run on this machine. It may not. Let's try it. That's, that was a problem I had with it. Uh, you run it in portable mode. It would run in one machine and not the other. Because I'd be doing it in my videos, you know. Unpack. Let's see. It should just be. It's not telling me what it's doing, but it should just be unpacking over in here to the other side. So I missed my click. I thought it pulled up a menu showing you what it was doing every time you did that. But I don't want to do it to, you know, try it again yet. Let's wait and see. Huh. Shouldn't take that long. I might have messed up. But let's hang on because it's not always, it's not real fast, even though that's not a very big file. Unpacking those directories. Hey, you can't right click and do it. You have to go up here to file and say unpack. I must have not got the click done, is all I can figure. Because by now, some you, it should have been done, really. Okay, let's try it again. There. I did. I missed it. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Now. Okay. Um. Yeah, see, it's already done. Now let's see if we can run it. I won't even make me a TV setup team viewer. I can't remember if I need to run TV setup or not. You know, this system might not have the dependencies on it because it's so brand new. I don't have, I'll have to find the instructions on here. Oh, that's for Windows, so they don't have an actual dedicated Team Viewer portable for uh, okay. Well, it won't hurt to run setup first, I guess. So I'll open me up a terminal. <clears throat> I wonder what that 
blank looking spaces right there. Um, I'll go ahead. You can this stuff is here in the in the tools menu, but I like to put the buttons up there. But I won't sidetrack and do that right now. Start terminal here. Oh, my miss! I must not have enough stuff installed. Evidently. So let's see. I'll have to just start a terminal like normal. And I don't need any root privileges, so that's another plus. Uh, you know, you, if you if you get you're running it, given the application root privileges, then <coughs> that can be uh, more dangerous. Now let's see. Oops. It's a lot easier to type a dash if you're going to have to do it. Did it work? What did I do wrong? T E A M B I E W 23. Okay, let's fix that. 12. I don't think you need the trailing. I'm not sure. I think it'll work either way. <clears throat> okay. Uh, dot forward slash TV setup. Let's see what that gives me. What did I do? Dot forward slash TV setup. No such file directory. And I home done team gear 12. I'm in the right directory. Well, let's don't worry about it because I think all I really have to do is. No. Team gear is a directory. Oh, team, see, I did okay. See, I made Team Viewer 12 directory, and it made Team Viewer. Okay. Well, what I probably ought to do, well, it won't matter if I make me a desktop shortcut and everything. Okay, so I need to get in, into, oh, yeah, you don't even have to put all the forward slashes and everything. CD Team Viewer, now I'm in Team Viewer. All right, let's try the uh, TV setup. There we go. Let's see what we got. Team viewer, run team viewer directly. You can just extract it and run. There you go. With that installation, team viewer will behave similar to team viewer portable or quick support on Windows. This should work if all, if all necessary libraries package are installed in your system. Okay, TV setup check libs. Run this command to identify missing and click stuff. You can then look for the matching packages and install them manually. Now that's a pain in the butt. I tried it once. TV install, so you could install it from there, which that's what I was trying to avoid. Actually, I couldn't install it from the RPM because I don't have everything installed yet to do that. I just realized that. And I don't ever do it. Man, don't do force install. Once I did that with my driver. My proprietary uh, NVIDIA driver on my Fedora 14 system, and then I wanted it off of there, and I couldn't, could not ever find a way to uninstall it. Uh, so if you have to force it, you probably you don't want it. Okay, permanent installation with all of the so and so and so so and so. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna do. Um, actually, I can. Oh, don't. I want to check libs. I got to. I may not have what I need, and if I don't, then I won't probably quit trying. <laughs> with this, oh, Control V doesn't work. Okay, let's see. Make sure I didn't get any extra spaces in there. Huh? Says the command not. What did I do wrong? Let's see. I don't know. It just says run TV setup. I wonder if you have to do do it like this. Yep. Got to do 
Got to do dot forward slash. Okay. Now to use Team Viewer. How to use Team Viewer phone usually. You can extract it and put where am I? Oh, an error. Where's where I ran that? There it is, right there. In order to use Team Viewer, that's the same thing. You need, okay, so I need 32 uh, bit libraries, even if you are on a 64 bit system. Oh, I see. Writing raw output to. You don't have execution permission for a home drawn team viewer. Ben Wine. Oh, okay. Home drawn team viewer. Ben Wine. TV Ben Wine. Deal, I say. Oh. It probably doesn't support 32 bit binaries yet. Oh, I was going to say, I can right click on the file and give it permissions in Crusader. I've done this in before in my other videos. I'm so I've run through all this before. I guess that's why I went to doing the installation. I forget so bad much, so it ain't gonna run. Um, we can prove that. <laughs> Team viewer. Team, I spelled it wrong. You just T A M. That's why I don't. I usually copy and paste because of that. My problems with typing. So let's do that. Properties. Some days, yes, last couple of days I've been typing better, so I was getting a little more brave there. Okay. I think it's just going to give some errors and not. Yeah, there's no wine, no wine server on here. I guess if I had wine installed, it might run. Uh, if it could find it, but I don't want to do all that. Okay, so now see that to me that was a pain and, I, and disappointing. But guess what I can do? It says go to trash instead. I need. I want. I like my. Uh, I guess I have to go in the settings and change that. I want it to go to. Uh, deleted although there has been a few times over the years where I messed up and deleted something I wanted wished I hadn't but uh, I'll leave it there I guess it would run I, I thought that I had got the idea I think it was from team viewer here that uh, you couldn't run a 386 a 386 apps on 64 bit anymore but I think it's just you gotta you gotta install those well the thing that's weird is it's not really it's not really a win Linux application so you got to install Wine, and then I guess you've got to install some Windows 32-bit binaries or something to get it to work. I can uh, just double-click on that, and it'll un extract it where you can see what's in there. <coughs> I think you'll see, or I, well, since I already deleted all that. Well, okay. But I'm, I was going to say, you're going to see some, uh, well, there's the Wine. See, it's got Wine little mini wine in there all ready to go you're going to see some uh, windows executables in here i think i guess if i would have not deleted my extracted file it would be able to read it better because i'm not seeing the all the file extensions but so uh, so isn't that java stuff so i'm not seeing what I was going to see. But it's not showing all the file extensions, is it? Just some of them. Okay, well, anyway, we can see that it runs on Wine. <coughs> um, and on Team Viewer 12, they didn't offer a 64 bit portable version. Well, evidently, evidently, I got mixed up. Unless I, I found it and now I can't find it again. I don't even see a portable version for. Uh, there might be a Team Viewer 13 that's portable. That could be the thing. I think this is Team Viewer 13. Yeah, this is 13. So, uh, 
No, I don't see anything. Yeah? Um, I thought I'd saw it. As a matter of fact, I thought I'd downloaded it. Again, they're doing all their junk, blocking the half the page, quarter of the page, or whatever. Red Hat Fedora, 64, 32-bit, Seuss. Okay, well, <clears throat> um, build a camera two again, <coughs> get back over there <coughs> on the machine. I just what another learn. I will start. So I just wasted a bunch more time, but another learning. Well, it would be. A, Learning experience. I've had too many learning experiences over and over because I can't remember what I learned. Uh, okay, switch back over. Got that running over there, but no way to connect to it. I suppose I could connect to it from some other machine. Well, this is the one I'm streaming from, though. I'm trying to hit my get my KVM switch to stop on the one I want. There we go. Okay. That's uh, where is it? Oh, I minimized it. Okay, so yeah, I don't want to install it. I mean, I could go ahead and install. Well, I can't, actually, I would have to go around and around and around finding all the. You've got to have the support to install. Uh, installed on your system to support from a downloaded rpm and since i really don't want to put it on there and keep it on there if i can run it in portable mode and that's going to be a whole i think i could probably i guess i could do it it looks like i could do it uh, but <clears throat> i don't know for sure that i could install the 32-bit stuff that i need to in there or not in fedora 28 but i don't want to do that right now um I'll leave it running because if I download it again, I'll get locked out of it. But I don't think I'm going to use it now. Um, let's look in here. Okay, now what? Oh, okay. Some live systems you can can install stuff, and some you can't. Um, H top that that's a system monitor. Let's see, that's probably what I want to open up. It might even tell me my distro. It's a pretty cool one. It's just a command line one, but you see it's got a transparent background so you can see the desktop. But it's pretty cool. Uh, but I do like it. It's harder to read. See how it's small. I'm, you might be able to make the text larger, maybe. But uh, it looks cool, but it's harder to read. Um, so live CD, HTML, Windows System 32, Explorer, Execute. See what? Huh. So it's running. Oh, because of me running Team Viewer. Okay. See, so it's running a bunch of Windows stuff in one because I started downloaded and started up Team Viewer. What I'm looking for is something that tells me if it told me my kernel, I would know whether it's you know Debain or. And like you know, me not remembering uh, stuff well. I don't remember the commands. There's some real simple commands. Uh, and I'm trying not to. I don't guess there's really you know, a lot of setting. You know, yeah, you can't right click in there or anything. There's not really any way to make it show more than what it shows. Syslog. Okay. Uh, What's up here? Sometimes what they put on the desktop for you is just what you want. If you don't pay, if you pay attention, information about XFCE. I think that's just going to be XFCE. Yeah. Okay, 
Okay, where's the terminal? It does have a desktop cert, so I can just find the terminal or whatever that way. System is HTOP, Application Finder, and Thunar. Let's see. Application Finder, Team Viewer. I'm searching for different things, seeing if I find it. Easy way to tell what this system has. There's nothing under package, so XFCE terminal. Oh, it, everything's set up that way. It's transparent. It looks cool, but it is sometimes harder to read on. Okay. Um, Can't think of any of the commands I was even using yesterday. Let's see. Uh, DNF update, and it'll probably say command not found. So I don't think it's. Uh, I was trying to see. There's like grep RPM so and so so and so, and it'll tell you information about your. Um, APT, GT, update, updates. Well, if I could type, app get updates, app get update, update. Um, System info? No. How about help? There we go. <laughs> that I can do. Oh. Oh, bash version. Oh, that's the uh, i686. Linux GNU. No. Didn't get lucky. Uh. And K or info to find out more about commands not in this list. Okay. You can search the help, you know, uh, you can remember how to do that. What? A okay, help name, yeah, okay. Help, help name to find out more about the function, okay. Use info bash to find more about the shell in general. Man K or info to find out about commands not in this list, okay. Man space dash K system. Let's see. Error. Did something wrong. Uh, help name. I've done this. System. Nothing. What is it I was trying to do? Um, help DNF. Nothing matches DNF. Help young. A help apt. Does not match. Sys info. Does not match. Help Linux. <laughs> God, that has to be in there. Okay, live rescue CD. System. Oh, you got to put. You got to put the uh, not the quotation marks, but the single marks on either side. Help, help. Mm, okay. This is topics. Uh, <clears throat> help DNF. Let's see topics. Wait. 
Fix perfume. I don't understand. It's like looks like everything I just got through typing. What did I type? Oh, I put help Linux. Try help help or try help help or man K D N F man K D N F info D N F. They have to be in. Uh, Info DNF. That didn't work. It did it like he said, I thought. Oh, I think you gotta say help. Sysinfo. I think Sysinfo is a system app. Is what I think. Nope. Help info DNF. Again, no topics match DNF. Okay. Um. <coughs> Don't see. Uh, probably since there's no um, this one in a PD. help synaptic. <coughs> <coughs> if it was a domain based synaptic, would be the app I would want to use. I can install it. Sometimes you can go ahead and install it in the terminal. Help Arch. Nope. <clears throat> I guess I would have to be um, smart enough to go use Google and find... I think there's a browser in here. I'll try with that, and then I'll, uh, yeah, I, I can, I'm sidetracked so bad here. I'll, I, I mean, I'm spending forever with just, I didn't want to just do the camera on the screen thing while I was, I wanted to show on remote desktop. I'm still trying to get, I was going to try to install a remote desktop app. This is getting silly. Um. Linux KDE system monitor app. That might me find out. <clears throat> the one that would uh, KDE plasma system monitor. Not seeing the name of the app. I don't know what it is I'm in. This is called linuxapps.com, so it's really not. This is not what I want. <clears throat> Genome System Monitor. That was why I was. I wanted to know. I've been wanting to know what distro this this is running on. <clears throat> K 
Okay, so that's not really helping. <clears throat> Command to find Linux kernel. That should do it. Linux can get system information also used. Where's the command? Thought it would show me right there, but I'll have to, I will have to break it down and go to the page. Okay, how to check your Linux kernel version. There's a video on it. You name R, that's it. You name R. Go to the page. Try to put it somewhere. Since it's transparent, it makes it a little harder to uh, to work in it. down there is best where it's dark you name R you name space oh you name space dash R oh all I got oh it's gen 2 4.3.0 gen 2 x86 there we go uh, <clears throat> didn't I couldn't even, I know I've never used I've never done any more than just like boot up gen 2 in the mess around with it on a live CD. Don't know about Gent 2. I don't know what it would take to install something or anything. So I'm not gonna try to do that. So the Bit Defender uh, <clears throat> live CD that I have here is running on Gent 2 4 3 0 x86 version. Alright. Wasn't that so much simpler than jacking around on the command line and not did I get the, did I close the terminal? I guess I did. It's gone. Okay. Um, go back to what I was actually wanting to do here. Today, I'm just in a mess, I guess. And not a hot, and not a hot mess either. <coughs> I'm in a mess mess. All right. Um, log, let's see. Okay, I know what I want to do. Uh, I want to go to the file system. Now, is there a search in here? Because I don't <clears throat> really know where to go to find system logs. I usually use apps that, you know, Bring them all up for me without me having to dig around and find them. I wanted to see um, <clears throat> now this is only going to have the one file manager. Well if I go into uh, my little 32 gigabyte card I can show one thing. Well let's just go straight into file system home live CD uh, X system X session errors. You can double click on it and it'll open up in a text view. Now let's see. Um, there's quite a few says critical errors, and this is one one way you can one of the sometimes a real quick way to find. And I always remember where this one is. X session errors. Your UI session. Um, E. There's always going to be some warnings. If it's a warning and an error, it's probably not a big deal. It probably just still works fine without it. But if you say critical, it's probably something that's not working or crashed. <coughs> uh, and I already did this before I started my video, and I'd search through this. I even saved the one that was there you know it'll change as, as the thing runs but I saved the one earlier um, I noticed there was a lot of reoccurring errors <coughs> <coughs> trying to look for something that actually 
Uh, one of them that kept reoccurring is uh, unsupported USB device type USB, which, you know, you okay, is that something wrong with the, it's not, I mean, the drive was working, but something could have went wrong. It could have got, the way that ca uh, cable sticks out so far and uh, and my way my machines are in my rack, uh, when I went to bed, I noticed, well, that, my trash can, I put it beside my bed every night, and I thought, well, that's awfully close to that. It could bump it and cause it to stop reading. But it was about two inches, three inches away. And I thought, well, when I go to bed, I'm not going to move that trash can. But one thing that did happen, I hadn't, didn't think about, my, I have a bunch of pillows on my bed. I, I used to sit up in it and watch TV a lot before I go to bed every night. But now I just, anyway, I spread them out when I go to bed. And two of them very, sometimes would fall off towards the computer rack side and get down in it a little bit. Well, this did tonight, last night, that machine was running. And I thought, well, did it over? And it was right in front of one of the exhaust fans. I thought, well, did it make it overheat and cause this problem or whatever? But if it really did overheat, I think it would have shut down. So <clears throat> I noticed that sometime between my second or third time getting up and going to the bathroom and when I actually got up. When I really got up, that's when they were like that. So uh, trying to figure out what, the whole point being, trying to figure out what caused this app to just crash or close. And I don't see anything that says, yeah, Thunar, Volman, Thunar is a file manager unsupported usb device hub that is most my uh, i have two usb ports on my keyboard and it's called a, and it re always recognized as a usb hub well when i uh, use my kvm switch to go to a different machine and back to this machine then it's going to mount you know turn on and turn that off so it's in there over and over so i'm pretty sure that's what that is so i, I don't believe that's got to do with my usb drive See, anything USB is something to look at because it's a USB drive that I'm scanning. And I'm booted to an SD card, but it's in a USB adapter, so it shows up as a USB drive. So, but these are all um, critical, variant, new string, assertion, string, null, fail, GTK source, schema, scheme. And that's in there over and over and over. <coughs> so... And I don't think there's anything that says crash. And I didn't see anything that said kernel. Or oops, I didn't do that, but yeah, it's not in there. <coughs> so, but USB is in there over and over. I didn't search for USB before, but yeah, all I see is the same thing. I'd never get through the document because it's in there over and over. And over. So I did go straight to the bottom. I don't know if the... <coughs> I figure the newest stuff is on the bottom and the oldest is at the top. I think that's how this, this log works. But it's the same, the, the last one is, uh, it's just that same thing over and over. So, and I've been switching back and forth. So, mouse pad. Watch, it's looking for a mouse pad. Well, I don't have a mouse pad. <coughs> but it seems to be, I think there might be one. It failed. Maybe it's just that it's set up to work with a mouse pad and there's not one there. And it just says fail because it didn't see it. <clears throat> um, so I didn't see anything in, in the uh, accession errors file to tell me that. Uh, I'm going to save it again, save this. I think this will be a newer version. Save it to my little 32 gigabyte drive. Vendor session error, save, replace. Replace. Okay, so no, I don't see anything that tells me what happens. Now, I was wanting to go through system logs. was the other thing I was thinking about doing. I don't really know where they are, especially in this. This is a, the distro that I don't ever use for one, you know, on top of everything else. So. Local. <clears throat> this is basically home live CD. So this is just the home directory. It's not the actual uh, file system. Let's go to file system. Now I can see all that. Var, user. Let's see if I can go. Bin. Yeah, there's so many different places where you could look. I was going to I was gonna search in here because I thought I had done that the last time I was in this. I don't see a search function in this file manager. 
at all. And I know I'm not good enough in the command line, obviously, to go in there and search. So can I go into user? Yeah, I can go under user. But not being able to search, then. Can't right click and search or anything. Open terminal here. <clears throat> that must be Thunar then. You can do that in Thunar. That's definitely my second. If I've got to use a Windows style file manager, I like Thunar because you can do the number one thing that I like about it is you can right click and say open terminal here. And that's something really helpful when you need it, you know, when you things that I do know how to do. Okay, so I don't know. I am not finding out why that app crashed. Uh, I think it crashed because when it when it's done, it sits there and waits for you to tell it what to do. You know, unless it sits there. No, it does. It doesn't like time out and go ahead and do it. I'm almost certain it doesn't. I guess I can look in the file system for if I find any uh, quarantine or anything. Uh, what was I? I went to my that 32 gigabyte drive for something. Risky CD logs are right there on that, <clears throat> but that's not what I want. Um, let's go back to. Yeah, I don't. I didn't really pay attention, but I don't think there's any quarantine folder. Let's see, apps, scanner, bin. This is the app folder. I think you could just. It's portable, basically. I think you could run it. Uh, on another distro, I was thinking about, well, what if I got this? I did save the whole live CD partition to my backup drive when I, when I started this. And because uh, I thought I might uh, try running it in Fedora Live System. Uh, I think it because it, I know I finally figured out the answer to my question. Does it download just the virus updates or the whole app? Well, it downloads the whole app and the virus updates because I found the script for it. But I've realized now you don't need just that script if you were going to run it somewhere by itself. You're going to need, I think, everything in that folder. See, there's a folder called dot apps, and then there's ply mouth, that's the boot screen, and then uh, scanner. So I know I would at least need that, if not some stuff out of var and so and so well there's a var folder in there i think it might stand alone because it has its own var folder share etc and bin folder i think i could run it i don't want to do that again I, I mean when i i'm gonna go ahead and reboot this machine to fedora i'll use fedora 28 uh, live security and then i'll download claim av and do claim av even though it's like three times slower than bit defender but it, it probably won't crash you know <coughs> Bitdefender didn't crash the last time I scanned this drive, but it wasn't on this machine. And this, and this also makes me worry that, okay, is there really is a problem with, I was just thinking as I, you know, as I was getting up and down last night, I thought, okay, that machine's been running all this time without anything crashing or anything. I don't think there's a problem with the processor not working right on that motherboard. Because um, I'd been kind of wondering, because it's not running quite wide. So I, it, it, and I kept thinking, well, has it got some malware on it or is it, some driver issue with the video card or something like that, or is it uh, flat that that processor's not working right on that motherboard? If that's the case, then <clears throat> that's a real problem. I'm going to have to buy a new motherboard. And, of course, that's going to be around another $100. And so... Uh, now, so since this app... That's why I am just go, was really wanting to try to find what happened. What was the crash, you know? Um, because if I can figure that out, I could see if it's if I get into like system logs. Gen two, hmm, I don't have a clue of how you know installing apps in Gen two goes or anything. Uh, and I guess I could look that up, but I, I mean, that's not really that. I don't have to do that. That was just for remote desktop. I was going to install something to do remote desktop. But um, um, went blank. 
Uh, well, I mean, there's other other tools that I know how to use that if I could install them, I could use them. Besides that, um, well, like a log, log viewer. There's one real app I really like, and I could go in my main system here. Well, it's not in my main system; it's gone. There's a log viewer. I think it's just called Log Viewer, and uh, I could install that and look for the logs. Look through the logs, because I mean. If it at least had a search, I can't believe. I thought Thunar had a search built into it. Maybe it's an add-in, a plug-in or something. Must be. Because I'll play. It's not there. It's not just me. It isn't. There is no search. I mean, I could probably hit Control-F and search. No, I can't even do that. Search in that window, but it doesn't do that either. Oh, there it is, yeah. So, see, I like sys, sys, kernel. Let's go in the kernel. See if there's something about log, any kind of log in there. I don't see anything. The keyboard won't. It won't navigate on the keyboard like Crusader bugs me. But yeah, I could just search for dot log files, dot log files, and maybe. You know, it's not a real big system. I could probably find it. Of course, uh, if it goes through and searches, uh, since my hard drive is mounted, I go through and search it too. Well, I guess it's not that important. I mean, I, I could have. You know, I'm scared to look at the time now. Yeah, it's 9.04, and I've been, on, I've been going since 6. I should have already had. Three hours of scanning, it could have already been going on if I would have just, just rebooted and started scanning. I thought it was a real good idea to show this, <clears throat> but instead I've gone in circles. Maybe it'll be a good idea in the long run. I hope so. All right, so uh, Seagate expansion drive. Let's make sure it's, yeah, see, it's still there. Make sure it didn't unmount or anything. That was one of my worries is did it get, of course, it could have been jiggled and then it remounted too, you know. Uh, actually, I don't know if Gentoo auto mounts like Fedora and Devane does, so. but uh, so let me think. Well, I I, th I think what I will do is reboot the system into that live CD, like I was saying, and uh, another one. I mean, into Fedora. And uh, <clears throat> I'll just shut it down, and then I'm going to plug in my USB stick with Fedora Live. I really wanted to find something about that. I wanted to just find out why it crashed. No, if you search for log, you just get log out and a couple other things that aren't actually to do with system logs. Oh, session and startup. I searched for crash and I got session and startup and window manager. Config notifications. I'm starting to make. I think that machine is starting to. The fan will. Oh, it's probably the laptop working really. Yeah, so I think it's, is it not paused? I don't think it is. Yeah, it was, my preview was playing this whole time and I forgot. Oops, what did I, mouse pad. I actually didn't really click on mouse pad. Notifications is what I was trying to click on. Oh. Default, top right, yeah, disappear after 10 seconds, so. <clears throat> I just don't. System profiler. Oh, really? And benchmark. That's on there. I went into system, sensor viewer, oh, 
Huh. It's blank. It's using sensor type ACP uh, thermo therm pack tachometer. It's a blank too. You can go Celsius or Fahrenheit. another way no there's only acpi so it's not it's not working and i guess the acpi is not well, maybe this board doesn't have that i don't i think that they don't use that in the newer board now i've forgotten forgot what i was searching for when i found that last thing config Notifications. Priv privilege granting. There's a lot of things in, in uh, this Gen 2 that I've never seen, like this little thing here. Authentication mode, SU, grab mode, enable, screen grabbing, behavior. <coughs> um, Startup session and startup. I'm just looking out you know, the excess the E rat. I don't know why they chose a rat for their mascot. Okay. Um, might have been going through different sections. Yeah, sensor there. I was in system. System profiler. I think this is that one that I like because it not only tells you the system. <laughs> Don't tell me that was what I was looking for all along. Yep, Gen 2 based system. So there was a graphic user app in there, and I just I looked over and over through all the apps, and I just never saw it. it didn't click with me. So I would have known that right away. Okay, um, operating system. Gen 2, same as I saw before. Uh, kernel modules. That's not telling you the version, it's telling you like Bluetooth and this and that and the other. But it is something I've been wanting to do. So it has benchmarks, Blowfish, CryptoHack. This is the one I've ran before. It's in Party Magic. I didn't know that was there. And several others. I think I may have already done this, but uh, this computer, Gentoo based system, AMD 8300. Doesn't tell you how much RAM. Can't see it, I guess. But uh, generator report shouldn't take too long. All bench, all everything. I'm going to click select all. Generate. Now I gotta put it somewhere. Put it in my hard info report. I won't rename it right now. I could break it. I can rename it later. Um, and just save it to my little S SD card. Okay, benchmarking. Please don't move <coughs> the mouse. Let's see if it makes it act up. It's been running. All day yesterday and all night last night. Um, I think I did this already, but uh, on it, but I'm not sure. So I'm glad I found that. Let it do this and see if it throws any errors or anything. You know, the, I'm talking about the the system itself, the processor, the memory, the you know, all everything. The video card. It's um, video card is you know the oldest kind. Of, the oldest thing in it now, I guess, because it's the original one I had in there. It's a five, I think it's a five twelve megabyte um, <coughs> video card, which is not fantastic, but it's better than the on. I think the onboard on this uh, motherboard is only like two hundred fifty six megabytes, and it's plenty. And it's fine for as long as everything works right. It's fine for uh, what mom does. You know, she doesn't. It'd be good enough for me. I mean, I don't play games. All I do is I watch a lot of videos, and I don't really. Well, I've never had a, 
<coughs> I've tried one, a few times here and there, like in KDN Live, to use the GPU for video rendering, but it never worked <coughs> with the cards I had. <coughs> So I've never been able to do any of that stuff. Oh, I kept looking at my preview going, why isn't any of this showing up? I realized I paused my preview a while, just a while ago. So it's testing the GPU and all that stuff right now. And all that stuff that stuff that makes you hypnotizes you. Makes my eyes just about roll around in my head. So, um, There we go. Now, there's one thing that I, in, in Part of Magic, if you click open when that thing is done, it will crash the system or lock it up. I don't think it, well, that's crashed. <laughs> so I'm going to say no. I don't, it might not do it in here, but you just say no. And then, of course, if you want to look at the results, you can go down here and click on them and just look at them that way to, before you close the app. But, um, I've, yeah, I went. I'm pretty. I did this. I'm. I'm pretty sure. This machine, uh, 3,300 megahertz. is what it's running at. I've got it on automatic overclocking. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's an 8,300. So I guess it's overclocked 300 megahertz. And I'm not gonna. I'm not worried about it any more than that. I mean, except for it acting kind of crazy lately, it runs great. It's powerful, you know. And. Um, or it's comparing it to all other machines. And then what's this? CPU crypto hash. Uh, and you can look at the percent of how it compares to other machines. And uh, CPU. Bob Nelsi or something. I can't see the word. Uh, and it tells you at the bottom results in seconds lower is better. So. That's. Okay, if lower is better. This one's one of the, it's the absolute, absolutely the worst one of all the ones it's compared to. <laughs> huh. This one higher is better, and this one is way up there. Of course, now the stuff it's compared to is dual cores and everything else. So, yeah, it's going to be better. And the blowfish lower is better, and it's high on that, too. So is Intel Core Core Two Quad. You know, the only one, the other machine I actually have that I could compare to, if they have a an i5 quad core, then I can say, oh, okay. Um, I don't see that in there. And uh, higher is better. It's as high as it can be on the crypto hash. Lower is better. It's really high on that. CPU in Queens, lower is better. It's lower than a lot of them. And you can really pour over this if you want. Um, FPU, lower is better. Huh. You know? Oh, well, I was going to try to say I remember, but I don't remember. I didn't even know sure if I ran this. but It doesn't look like it's getting such a good report to me. Uh, lower is better. F there was FT, FPU, FFT, and this is FTU ray tracing. Oh, well, now that would be, I guess, frames, frame, frames per unit? What? I don't know. FPU? I guess that's the video card it's testing. Well, yeah, it's an old video card. Okay, so that's not the CPU there. And then there, on the GPU drawing, there's only... Uh, yeah, no, that's the video card. Maybe it was, now was it testing my onboard video and not the other one? Or what? I don't know. Because it just says this machine, 3300 megahertz. But, uh, okay, so there you go. I mean, most of that I really, I don't really know what all it exactly recommend, represents, you know. Um, <clears throat> but it is helpful M more than any other thing I've found um, for in the Linux, for, you know, that's on Linux system that you can put on Linux system. The sensor viewer didn't even work. Let's see settings. I'm going by, and 
instead of going through all, I'm going by sections. Sometimes I somehow find something that I didn't see before. Multimedia, internet, graphics, accessories, task manager. Yeah, I've already looked in there. Interviews in there again and all. Okay, so, well, I'm glad I got to do that. Um, so I'm going to shut it down now. And I guess I have to click on log out and then shut down. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to want to do this. Let's see. Okay, it is shut down. I mean, I could, I would definitely didn't, since there was a problem, I wasn't going to just restart that scan. So, uh, <clears throat> now see, I've had that camera running for a really long time, and, and I know that in, in the past, you know, look, the longer I run a camera, the more the uh, audio usually gets behind the video and stuff, but, but it doesn't uh, cause OBS, see, this is a new version of OBS Studio, it hasn't locked up or anything like it did on the AS Rock. <coughs> Some beginning to first I thought it was running great and everything was fine but now <coughs> getting to see signs that that I'm afraid that I may not be able to run it on this motherboard uh, so um what do I want okay so I think I'll swap to the other mic now All right, can you hear me now? Is it, I don't hear myself at all now. Surely I haven't lost my audio forever. Oh, there it is. So, uh, and even though I see a signal there, let's go to the desktop and I can show it. Even though I see a signal there from my, uh, my, my, uh, I gotta stop that. It's playing in, in the back. My audio's still playing audio's over there in the background. I was going to leave it so that I could tell what was going on. But well, I'll show what I was just now well, talking about. I guess it's turn us off again. Hey, you go to property. Hey, go properties to property. or advanced? No, properties not the regular no, properties. Not the regular properties. Leave that like it is. That right there is one thing to consider. The visibility behavior. Stop when not visible. Restart when visible. Pause when not visible. Unpause when visible. Always play. And I don't know how I had it before. So I left it like that. I left it like that. Okay, so maybe this is okay, my so problem. Advanced, my properties. Problem. Advanced properties. It's on. It's on. And the, and you can turn the monitor. You, you can, can listen to it now. Uh, I know the old version. I'm almost. The old I'm, version. I'm almost I, yeah, I'm certain, I'm certain this yeah, was not certain here before. You could not turn on. Before. You could not turn on monitoring of your audio monitoring stream. Of your audio so I remember stream. researching it and looking it up because I thought I just couldn't find it. I thought I just couldn't find it. Oh, there's more. Oh, there's more. Look at that. The the other. The other I only have two tracks. I only have two tracks. But Mike Ox and Desktop were already desktop set to already one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See, I clicked these one and see, two because that's all I could see. I didn't even notice that the window was actually bigger than that. Actually bigger than we that. 
go. That's the way things should open up by default. And then it never, never do anymore. Never, never so, do anymore. Um, so, um, why aren't I getting? Why aren't I getting a sound? A sound. Let's see, I'm gonna turn my sound on back on the laptop again so I can tell when, so when it comes on. When it comes on. I don't know why I'm not getting it anymore. I don't anymore. know why That's I'm not getting thing. it anymore. That's the thing. So I'm gonna click three and four so just like the others and see. Those were done already like done that, so that's a good like defaults that, so or that's something. Good defaults or something. But, uh, but uh, and I guess I'll have to mute. I guess I'll have to mute. Okay, I hear it. Okay, I hear it. Okay, now can I hear myself? It's pretty low for one thing. Pretty, uh, it's a lot lower than it ever has been before. There it is. I can br I can hear it, but it's really low. Okay. Um, okay. Keep trying to use the same mouse for a different machine. So uh, I don't know. I'm not trusting my wireless mic now. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why it's. Uh, did work and now you know now it's and just now it wasn't and <laughs> other than that I mean I well I mean I why does it need that three and four and when earlier all I needed was one and two and I didn't know the difference that there was a three and four but it says I'm only working in stereo I don't have more tracks so uh, this is provision so you could have up to six tracks of audio and I turned these on and off and they do work and you can but it causes a, not only a real bad echo of your, what you hear, but it causes a real bad echo of uh, in the recording. So I turned it all back off. Now let's see. I'm going to switch back to the... Turn the SM58 back turn on. The SM58. I'm just going to use that because I know it's dependable. I was fixing to go to the mic, the other mic, so I, when I moved... Yes. Oh, wait. <coughs> Well, it's either either be silent or try to use the wireless. So I guess I'll go ahead and go back and try to use the wireless because I'm fixing to go over there behind the machine. Over there behind the machine. All right. So. Uh, All right. So. Uh, either be silent or try okay. to use the wireless. So I guess I'll go ahead and go back and try to use the wireless because I'm fixing to go over there behind the machine. All right. <laughs> my, I'm getting a signal on the wireless mic because my laptop's playing so loud over there. Okay, yeah, no, it's it's way, it's just not as loud as it was before. I don't know what's causing that. Okay, but it is working. All right. As long as it's working, I'll be all right. So what I'm going to do is get on the... Uh, Okay, now we should be back to having sound again. What do we? Ha why do we have more audio? They're not labeled in there. So, uh, what is it I've got going now? Okay, my sound's muted over there on the laptop, but I should hear. Me. Yeah, okay. As soon as I got back to the S and fifty eight, I'm working again. Everything the settings are definitely different in the uh in the um <clears throat> Yeah, see I still have the mic on, but it's not uh picking up. 
So, um, what I'm going to do is, there we go. The mixer, oh, we used to, there was a button for the whole thing. Go back to the desktop again. Go back to the desktop again. I, I can't I, I stand can't hearing myself on that delay. Myself on that delay. So it's hard for me to test, so it's figure it out. Test, <laughs> it throws out. my whole thinking off. I can't even figure out what the heck I'm doing. But uh, what I was thinking is I could go into settings and maybe do the global audio settings. Settings. Stereo. Stereo. See all the extra. See all the extra. Like desktop devices like on, but desktop, desktop devices audio on, device too. I don't have an, these, don't these have devices. I learned that in the beginning. I learned that in the beginning. Uh, so it's best to keep those so disabled. To keep those disabled. And, uh, audio master and, uh, decay rate. Audio master mode. decay rate. Oh, okay. I guess that's the. Uh, I guess that's the. Uh, the view. The view. Okay, so there's nothing in okay, there to so set. There's nothing in there to set. You got you do it. You got to do it right there. But if you have to do it on every channel, on every channel, um, um, then that gets into that gets into a lot more sidetrack. A lot more sidetrack. So if I turn on my, um, I have to be monitoring it for me to know if it works. So I'm on the I'm on the um, camera one now. Advanced properties. Make the window wide enough to see it. Oh, there it is. Okay, now it's yeah the the IDs are there, so I can turn on. Oh, there's no audio on that one. It's this one up here. One up Cam here. three. Cam three. There we go. Cam three. There we go. Cam now three. I guess I can. Now I guess I can. Okay, I think I hear I think I hear barely hear it. Barely hear it. Get confused about which mute goes with which, which mute deal goes now. Which deal now. Okay, so that should be just Okay, now I should be on the wireless. Two, three, four. The thing is, I'm going to have to go through and do that on every single scene now. Or else. Everything's in a different spot. You have to really pay attention. But the ones that are just video streams, you don't want to turn on audio to them. You might even get noise. You never know. So now I should be good. And uh, <coughs> I would want it in the desktop screencast. I'm just guess I'll just do it because it's either do it or either do it while I'm thinking about it, or I could forget and really mess up later. It should be a global setting for the whole thing. Okay, that one's already on. I, oh, because I did that over and over. Okay, so cam one, cam two. One that says just VLC video source, but it doesn't say what it, uh, what it is. Well, I don't think I would want that because yeah, audio is from King. Yeah, VLC video source. It's just named different because you name those the way you want to. Okay, now cam one and two. I guess there's no point worrying about sidetracking today. This is the sidetrack day. Okay. I might as well just. Uh, 
I'm just doing all four channels because uh, four tracks because that's the way it's it was done already by default I think I don't remember doing that myself you know I did import the settings but evidently that older version is not it is not the same so settings it's it's in a different order so you really have to read about which one are you clicking on okay so um, audio wave okay getting all kinds of like if, if it duplic you know duplicates or qu if it quadruples itself or something or even more because I put it in every channel or every scene maybe I really only needed to turn it on in this one the one that is the I hope I haven't messed up um, it's hard I won't be able to tell to listen to the recording will I because I, I thought about this in the way in the beginning and then I forgot if I would have went to cam 3 stream and turned it on in there like that maybe it would have already worked in the rest of them and I, I could be working right and everything is turned up all the way on the inputs and everything and the volumes right there on the left side of it says 100% on every one of them so I'm just gonna do it though and well uh, the signal do, like I said before yeah I keep forgetting the signal looks weaker and I don't have a clue as to why it looks weaker now than it used to audio cam 3 now it's on in there I wonder if that going to that uh, after you know I did uh, cam three stream the one that's just audio and now it's on in there so maybe that will will have done it automatically I wouldn't have to keep doing this over and over if I'd have done that so maybe they're all tied together let's find out I think they were because now they're all on the next ones I'm going to they're on so yeah if I would have uh, remembered my first thought and went straight to cam 3 stream and turned that on in that one I'm working now let's uh, make sure I don't hear myself over there though I'm just not I don't have the volume up very loud either and now the laptop I think it's getting tired it's turned up all almost all the way now it is all the way um, <coughs> Seems like it's really too low. So I'm going to mute that that audio over there now. <coughs> okay. Um, but it has a you know it's not a bad signal. It's just not quite as loud as the uh, SM58. So if I turn them both on, let's go back to the desktop again. If I turn them both on. 
and I can do it here where in the desktop series it yeah. can be seen in the the uh, mic is the, uh, you know quite a bit louder you know, but not a bit well louder, but not I've so I brought it back I've down to try to bring them all together try to bring them all together the mic really was too loud in the, the last mic really was too loud few, video. last few videos anyway so um, let's see if I've got the mic really was too loud the last really was too loud the last few and so um, yeah there we go it is working i guess since i went to that much trouble i may as well use it <coughs> okay <coughs> oh and i'm streaming 30 frames per second and uh on the yeah, the other machine the as rock the one i'm worried about not working well it was never got i never saw it get over about really about nine no i think it might have got to around yeah i saw it at 15 a few, a few times but mostly it was going between five and nine and I guess it tries for for what you set it at thirty frames is what I set it at, and then it but it buffers, uh, drops some frames <coughs> if necessary to keep the stream from being bad, you know. Drop the frame rate so that you won't have the effect of seeing drop frames in the videos. I'm trying to say. All right, so um, don't need that. Team viewer ID anymore. <clears throat> I'm still talking on the mic because it's in front of me. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and do what I was trying to do. And my preview is still playing, so I guess I really can pause it now because I know where I'm at. And uh, I guess I'll check my audio one more time before I pause it. Make sure everything's still working. Make sure, make sure I can still. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's causing it, but it's now that I don't have my <laughs> my old system, I'm having all kinds of different uh, uh, growing pains, I guess, for the newer version of uh, of. Um, OBS Studio. So here's my uh, <coughs> Fedora 28 uh, live um, security uh, USB. <coughs> so I'm going to put that in the machine <coughs> and I'm going to go over to the back of it and put it in there because um, now on this it, this other this other camera actually is on a handle that's really easy to grab it and move it around, but it really takes a while to set that up. So if I want to move a camera, it'll be this one, I guess. That's fine. It's it's not that bad. So I think I'll do it. I think I'll grab it and take it with me. And uh, <clears throat> I'm getting hungry. I'm going to be eating lunch. I'm going to be after I get all this going. I'm going to go ahead and stop and eat lunch okay so here's where i'm going here um the uh, of course there's my laptop i'm always talking about that i'm monitoring from I'm monitoring my stream it's still playing isn't it let's see well it won't hurt i was going to stop it and down here is the as rock it's not on because i shut it down and there's where my you can see that cable coming out the bottom I need to move some of this stuff. When I sit down on the bed, it won't go my way. Okay, uh, the cable down here. Yeah, I need the preview so I can know what I'm showing. Okay, that is my USB. And see, I've already shoved it back. It was right out to the edge of the wood down there, the base I have down there. So, uh, see, do I want, yeah, I'm going to see if I can get this to, Set this down, I guess. Can't even reach it. Let me see. Uh, uh, okay, so I was going to see if I could make it reach to the back of the machine so it won't be sticking out since I'm going to have to run it overnight or longer. And that was my, the other one was my uh, SD card and the USB adapter there. Pretty handy to have one of those. I didn't know I, I didn't know they existed till I, I ordered when I bought that USB. It came with an SD, came with that one, and a regular full-size SD card adapter. Pretty, pretty nice. So, um, guess I'm gonna need some white. I'm 
get my uh, flashlight, weather radio flashlight, and put it down there. And uh, this one's not so easy to get into these tight spaces like the other one on the handle, but. looking at just looking at the wall it's too far behind for me to tell oh if I look at my main preview I wouldn't be fooled by that one I need to I need to pause this one it'll help me not be confused okay so yeah there's a bad view of the back of this <laughs> system so um, yeah rather than try to hold that camera I'll do that so I, I can't see what my camera's aiming at when I, without, you know, going back around here. That's somewhere near, the, well, that blue USB, that's my uh, keyboard. I don't know how many of them's back there. I think there's two rows. Yeah. So uh, I think I'll put this one below it. That's the one I'm going to boot to. Well, actually... No, that's too much. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I want it right there. That's pretty tight. Actually, that's all right. That kind of helps. Yeah. That way they're kind of, there's, there's a pretty deep inset right there, and it helps keep... I'm worried about breaking something. You know, when I move this thing around, see, these things can hit the wall real easy. Luckily, it stops by the power cord. It hits first. But those USBs, um, I worry about breaking things. So, um, oh, you can actually see what I was doing. Okay, so I got to be really careful when I... Uh, Shut the lid on my my preview laptop. This cable on the in the USB drive is really prone to coming out of the USB deal itself. It's really small, and um, you know it'll come out. So I'm trying to figure out which way to try and route it to not put any stress on it. Phone's in the way. I, I didn't grab the camera, didn't even think about it. But, you know, I think it's just, at, with age, it's gotten a lot easy, looser. It's, uh, no, it's hard to show it to you, but I'll show it some other time. It's just really small and uh, it doesn't stay in well. <coughs> and rather, if I can, if it'll reach, I'll just not move the drive is what I'm trying to do. Yeah, because even when I plug, shove in my keyboard, when I shove in my keyboard tray with my laptop on it, yeah, it does reach. Um, I don't want it to pull it loose. That would be a disaster in the middle of a stand. So I'm more and more starting to think I'm going to take that thing out of its case and put it in a machine and leave it there. Uh, one good thing about it is being able to do this, and you can get a lot you get a lot faster write speed with USB than you do with network, because I only have right now only this machine has a uh, gigabit Ethernet, but it's uh, not working. It's because there we go. I heard the, the drive. I actually did what I don't like to do. Oh, why would it power up? It did. Oh, because there's power on this even when it's shut down. So it powered that drive up. Of course, it won't mount until I boot it up. But uh, so I've got it plugged in, you know, right next to the case with a little bit of support. So that's actually okay. And uh, so if I turn this, shove it. I don't have to shove it back as far now because... Uh, you know, yeah, I don't want anything banging up against the wall. There's actually about an inch of space between the cord, and so everything else is not not being jammed up against the wall. So as long as the 
closing my keyboard tray doesn't yank it loose, then I'll be all right. But it sure is a knot in an optimal place. I'm moving the, uh, I guess I should get the camera from down there now. Well, I wasn't sure I was through down there. Um, let's get a camera. Okay, so um, see here it is, and I won't unplug it, but it's the, the actual metal connector, you know. It's really short, and so it's so easy to pull out of there. I mean, it's scary. Because the phone generally sits right there, but you know, I think maybe that'll... Yeah, I don't think it'll cause trouble. It might help, help support it. Now, the other thing I was concerned about is when I... I can't do that. I was going to try to move my US... Move that. <clears throat> so whenever I... I can't do it with one hand. I'm going to try to set this over here, and it won't set over here to save its life. Will it? Uh, <coughs> let's see if I, I'll just set the whole thing in the floor. There we go. Now, here's what I was trying to see. When I go to shut this, I may forget to be uh, careful like I just forgot to pull that cable out of the way so I have to get everything in its right place and then it seems to be okay see how tight that is on that well it rode on there really nicely And it's still, the blue light's still on. It didn't unplug it or anything. Remember, I kind of vaguely remember before I bought that, some people had mentioned that particular thing they didn't like about it. And I think somebody said they taped it up, but I don't see how in the world you'd tape that and really have it do any good. I was thinking, well, that cable into that box for the... thinking, well, I guess you could... Uh, Laptop. I'll shut the lid in it. This one goes to sleep when you shut it like like normal. It actually gives it a little rest. Uh, anyway, uh, I haven't done anything because I didn't think that would work well. Now, I do think that if I had, like, I had, this was something. See that thing right there? It was something that came with something, but it's a little, uh, you can reuse that strap, you know, uh, that, came with some products you know it came something ta attached to it and then it has that and uh, anyway I used it as a cable holder there and um, something like that if I but well, what I was thinking is could I use zip ties somehow well anyway let's move this so I can show what I'm talking about but it's um, there's just not much good way to get a hold of it I mean you'd need something it gets a hold about right there, I guess, and then a zip tie. That's what I was trying to say, a zip tie that you could, but it ain't going to get a hold of it unless it has some kind of a circular thing. This one doesn't, that's as close as it goes. It doesn't have any more catches to go closer. That could be a candidate and then put zip ties through there, but it, does, it wouldn't work. That's too big. That part up where my thumb is is there. So I don't know. I don't know what, I don't, can't think of anything I have. So I haven't done anything about it, but it's really, I, normally I don't ever move it. Normally it's not really a problem because normally I don't, don't move it. But I've been moving it, that cable around. I don't move the cable. Normally I don't move the cable to a different machine. But I've been doing it a lot lately and it's, I don't know, I think I'm all right. Cannot think. I mean, starting another super long scan is making me think about this big time. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm 
my um, let's see I guess I'll pull my little rolling table back to its spot <coughs> And uh, oh, I want to put okay. So my SD card, I will put it in there. Now, what I'm thinking is, once I get it booted up to the live system, I'll put this in there and copy the uh, scripts and stuff I was needing yesterday onto here, and then I'll scan it first, just it with Clam AV. So uh, I was thinking that was really close to. Being able to <laughs> go back and take a break, but <laughs> I've got a lot to do here before I'm ready to quit and take a break. Okay, so I was still working with my audio and everything, and my chair. These wheels are worn out on my chair, and if I have it in a, have them in a certain position, then it feels like it's going to turn over on me. And they fight me; they won't roll anymore. <clears throat> Okay, so let's get back to the S M fifty eight. It definitely has better. I don't know why I'm having sound trouble. I've said that already a hundred times. It's the volume's not good, and uh, the uh, um, yeah. Of course, I fixed all my setup problems there with not getting any audio at all should end up being really loud. It's not as loud as I thought it was going to be. Okay. <clears throat> but that's normal. That's what I that's the level I want from both mics. And I used to be able to get them pretty much pretty close. Just a few day, few videos ago. Few, you know. Uh but that was I don't know what's changed. Okay. So, um now see since I didn't bother this one, I can grab my, my old stick. Not really a stick; it's a back scratcher. But uh, and I have paper towel on the end of it. I'll tell a little trick, a little uh, <laughs> a life hack. I hate that try to get so silly, but uh, I, you know I needed to put aloe vera on my back because it was itching, right? Uh, so uh, and something was there that I couldn't see, but I knew there was something that needs some medicine on it, right? So I finally thought one day I wrapped a paper towel around it and put some rubber bands on it to hold it, and then <laughs> I could put aloe vera on my back. Oddly enough, okay, I went ahead and turned on the AS wrong. Oddly enough, it feels pretty scratchy, so you can scratch your back with it too. The metal forks on the thing are really too rough. They could they could scratch you. I mean, if you wouldn't watch out, you could, uh, you know, scratch, hurt yourself a little bit with that thing anyway. So, but it's a, a telescopic deal you can pull it in and out but i just leave it leave it out but it's about uh it's about to uh, kind of one of one of them wants to pull out too far and it's about ready to break i think well i'm still not seeing that machine i don't guess i accidentally uh i might accidentally knock loose the vga cable <coughs> dang it it's it's not uh i don't screw them in because i move them so much Evidently, I did. Okay, so back to the back of the machine. I'm just going to leave the cameras like they are, and I'll run around there and do it. Run around there and do it. We'll we'll switch mics. So okay, we should should have already seen it by now. And uh, okay, back to the wireless mic. That way I can report how how wonderful it's going. Dang it. I put the table back and everything. All right, let's see what we got back here. Well, it's not loose. And I've got it in the right one because there's two. And this one has the onboard with the motherboard and then the video video card it's not loose a 
unless it's hanging up and not booting up because that because uh, that USB drive is in there. It could be. Um, most of the machines don't do that. It could be hanging up. It's, well, I should still see video. Oh, this is the day of Don not having a clue what he's doing. That's what it is. It's working perfectly. Oh, it's checking the one of the. It's actually checking our drive. Which one? Fragment count, support ISO, no. It's almost done. I think it was checking the uh, Fedora 28 on the USB stick, but it's. It, it, I don't know if it, it went by. Once it was done, it went right by. So I don't know if it fixed anything or. That's the cool thing about uh, Linux. I didn't know it did that in the live system, but it was checking. Uh, yeah, I think it was checking that USB stick, not the yeah, because this is it booted to the live system like it's supposed to. What was wrong is I forgot to switch my KVM script over to the uh, that machine. Uh, well, I'm glad I didn't unplug anything or anything. I didn't mess it up. It was booting up just fine. As a matter of fact, even the video was the right size. Uh, I guess I got there in time. Since it was checking the, the, the USB stick, I guess it delayed it long enough for me to get it all done. So um, now I want to switch back to my other mic before I go on. Though. I still feel a little bit leery about using it. Since I, I had to, you know, spend all that time going through the settings. Let's see. <coughs> SM58. Okay, we should be good with that now. And I muted the cam. Okay. And I want to make sure my sound is good before I move on. <coughs> and switch back to the uh, yeah okay. I guess I'll pause <coughs> pause the preview because the machine was getting tired okay now we'll get back on the camera Now, the live system, evidently, <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm starting to remember that. They don't, they sit there and wait. They used to always just sit there for a while and give you, ch if you really wanted to change, I don't think there's any other options, but, well, maybe you could log in as a root, but you can get a root by just typing SU, so. Let's see what, oh, yeah, there is other, and so I, yeah, I think you could type in root if you wanted, but I don't know if it'll let you do that, but you used to be able to. Anyway, I want a live system user. Because if I need root privileges for anything, I can just run the program as root user. That's the best way to do that. It gives you less. Well, you're not. You're not. Your system's vulnerable when you're running as root. More vulnerable to, it. like if they're. And I'm fixing this game for malware. So. So basically, um, I just wish I could. I need to learn how to make me one of these that's already got Clam AV on it. Because I'm going to have to install Clam AV. And uh, I don't think I have a desktop search, so yeah, it doesn't come with one, I don't think. Uh, app search. Probably has a file search, but let's see. I'll have to use Dragora, I guess, yeah. And uh, oh, it has app application finder. It sure does. Oh, because this is XFCE desktop. Cool. Right. So what I was looking, thinking about, what was I thinking about? Oh, see if it had any remote desktop server on it already. Remote. i um, gotten so used to seeing that preview and looking over at it that no VNC. No KRFB, no Pino, no Tiger, 
no uh yeah bnc i turn stop for desktop no desktop remote or anything so if i wanted to do that i have to install it so i think i won't uh because i've spent so much time messing with all that already today definitely i'm going to try to use what i used to, had been doing was just using the portable version of team viewer but then some like i said sometimes some machines it runs on right out of the bat and something if it's a 32-bit machine it'll just run if it's a 64-bit you gotta well i tried several times i remember now and i never did get it working i think i was, I was looking at what i saw just now i think it seems to me i could do it if I, I think i saw things that i hadn't that i hadn't really caught on to uh, didn't, probably didn't follow the instructions Okay, so um, I just need to go to uh, see if I can add that. I want to see if I can add uh, launcher. Okay, where'd it go? Uh oh. I guess I didn't finish doing it. Is what happened? Add a new item, launcher. Program launcher. There it is. Okay, so I think they're just not able to see them because there's something I haven't. You got to do something. Close. No, I don't know. Well, I've forgotten how to do it all of a sudden. So <clears throat> every time I want to use App Finder, I have to go to Accessories. You can't just right click and put. If you right click, it opens it. You can't say right click and put on the uh, put on the panel like you do with Mate. <clears throat> okay. Um, DNF Dragora. That's the only one on there. So that's the one I'll use. I wonder if I'm going to have to. If it asks me, then I will. See, I don't want update. I want I have to change it to all if I want to search for anything. <clears throat> I'm not going to do the updates in a lot in the live system. It would probably fill up the whole live system, the whole live part, live part, virtual partition, or however you should call it. I just want to find uh, play M A B. Okay, now. If I type KLAMAV, it will in install that. You have to hit click search, can't hit enter. It will automatically install everything it needs, you know, in CLAMAV, the uh, CLAMAV, I believe, is what I remember. Yeah, there it is. So, uh, CLAMAV, all the KDE, then CLAMAV, CLAMAV, yeah. And it's 186 megabytes, but I did it before on this machine, and it worked just fine. So I'm going ahead and do that. Yeah, it didn't make me type in the root password. So I guess it's giving you the sudo or s or sudo user or uh, sudo root user, sudo uh, super user uh, by default. <clears throat> Maybe this one does it because it's a security uh, testing and pen testing distro anyway. I think the other one should uh, it pops it up and you have to. Well, like if you're in the terminal and you type su, it'll just kind of pop, flash a little bit, and then you and then it works. Instead of actually asking you for popping up a deal, saying, "Well, of course, in the terminal it doesn't pop up a window, but it works." I don't know. <clears throat> I was thinking I was going to have to do something to get. I thought I might have to type su in the terminal and then open the app that way, but I don't want root privileges just to run in. Well, in order to install Clam AV, I didn't know if I could do an installation, but yeah, you can in Fedora 28. Uh, just open DNF Dragora and it works. You don't have to. It doesn't ask you for your root password or your super user. Yeah, I think it's done. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we want. I guess I could add some some of this stuff to down here. I don't know how. I think it's hard to get. See, it's all jammed up to where it's hard to get in there and click. Application Finder. Yeah, that was the application. Oh, there's the Application Finder down there at the bottom. I forgot that. That's how uh, 
I don't I don't use my XFE XFCE that way. I change it to look like mate. <laughs> okay, so uh, there we go. Clam AV. Okay, we got to set it up. Okay, check for updates now. It's going to put them in home live user. Yeah, well, I ha that's going to be the place to put it. And it always does that. Could not contact update server, but then it'll try another mirror. I guess that's what it does, and then it'll work. It says clam A already. It's clam uh, AV update process started. Uh, upgrade clam AV now. Upgrade clam AV now. <clears throat> well, okay, it's downloading the updates. I'll let that finish. I don't. I don't think I'll uh, try to. You know, this is what I just now downloaded. Should be the newest one. So, and it does automatically. Well, when you, I told it. Well, I didn't automatically. I told it. Okay, the virus database updated. So this is the newest version anyway. And uh, um, okay, now before I'm gonna plug in my um, SD card. And I'll do that in the front. It's real short. It's not sticking out. Well, it's not gonna stay there either. Hang on. Okay, so before I start my long scan I'm gonna, um, of the whole SD USB device, I'm going to uh, <clears throat> just do the, uh, first I'm gonna write some files, I'm gonna copy some files I need over to the SD card, and then I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go to, but it's gonna mount in a run media, uh, should, not seeing it. If I type, will I find it? I see mount. I wonder if they changed it in. No. See the old folders, the original folders. Uh, Media and mount are still there, but Fedora doesn't use them anymore. The regular ones on the on the root drive. Run. Maybe they're not mounted yet. Yeah, I think they're not mounted yet. So let's minimize them. I haven't clicked on them. Uh, it's there. It shows to be there. Let's open it up. Okay, there it is. Easy to boot. Now I want to copy those files over that I want. And. Uh, Actually, let's change the view to, uh, let's see what all, okay, Thunar is, yeah, that's what it has, well, no, it has the other one too, but uh, I don't want that KJ, I want, I think I want Thunar, I don't know, am I in Thunar, let's see, yeah, I'm in Thunar, so now, let's see, I should be able to, I'll go ahead and click on show hidden files, go ahead and make it a detailed list, and then I want to make, a, oh, it doesn't have the extra pane, show extra pane, oh, it's the other one that does that, I still like Thunar better, so let's go ahead and just do it like this, I'll open up two windows and do it the old fashioned way. That one there, and I'll drag. I'll just. Uh, I really like doing it the other way, don't I? When you have, when you can open up two panes, yeah. Guess I don't want Thunar in this case. Let's close it. Um, go back to files. Oh. File manager. Oh, it's just the icon. This is Thunar. Yeah. That's what you got. Okay, well, 
and see how we're going to deal with this. I want to be able to copy this drive here. I guess I'll do it, like I said, the old-fashioned way, and I guess I'll have to try and drag and drop. I hate doing that. It always screws up. Okay, I want the... Uh, where is it? It did not mount. There it is, Seagate expansion drive. It's not mounted yet. I may have to unplug it and plug it back in or something. Oh, there it is. It mounted when I double-clicked on it. So... Gonna make whoops. I say I'm gonna make it bigger what I can read in it. Well, that's what I guess I'll have to do. It did that all on its own. I was trying to drag it over. <clears throat> so I just want to make it at least big enough for me to read in it. And this one I'll go ahead and make it the same length. Okay, so I need uh documents. Didn't it find it? it? Didn't go to documents. Okay, there. Oh yeah, it did. It just didn't look like it. <coughs> okay. Um, DNF install scripts. I'm just gonna copy them over. Now drag and drop. Did it work? Yeah. Okay, it worked. You know, there, in Windows, I used one of the reasons I hated drag and drop because sometimes it would just for whatever reason I never understood, just move it instead of just copying it. And I would lose things sometimes, you know, not know where they were. Or sometimes it would not work right and it would break in the middle of doing it and it would you lose your whole folder. It would delete it. Okay, so I've got my DNF install scripts. I think I'm going to get the YUM stuff too because I don't know what's drag there we go there's more yeah it's 47.9 uh, megabytes so it'll take a little bit longer <clears throat> and see then I'm going to scan that drive to make sure there's nothing bad in it uh, before I go scan the whole Seagate drive again but I can just plop this 32 gigabyte SD card into my machine so I can go on to working and building my install scripts and Valentine file name do you want to retry yes do you want to skip it well I'm gonna have to okay now that's something you don't see in Crusader invalid file name this is not a Windows system it is coming off of an NTFS drive but it looks like it's uh, Oh, it just did that. That's something weird. It's always done. I remember that now. Okay, so anything else I need out of there? Trying to grab that tiny little bar. Okay. Um, I'm just going to look through the folders because I really don't have much memory going on right now. A little bit here and a little bit there. <coughs> but the YAL maps install this, the DNF install scripts, YAL maps install files. I, I named it DNF install scripts, but really it should be in it, DNF install files because there's scripts and text files of the lists in there, you know, from my various systems. And, uh, Okay, I'm gonna. I typed FED for Fedora, and I'll just kind of look through here. I don't think I even have a Fedora 28 folder on here yet. Well, yeah, I do. Okay, improvements in Anaconda. That was something I was wanting to find. Drag that over there. Now, yeah, every time you do that, it. it Go the the page is over to the right and stays there. It's all I remember. It's always done that. 
Okay. Yeah, I stopped. I gave up just looking through them all. It was just too many. I wasn't seeing anything. I was just rolling the mouse. Okay. I think that's probably the things that, well, of course, like I say, commands. I have a lot of commands. But that could be in any of those folders. Got a four door twenty five info, but I don't think I ever actually installed it on anything. OBS Studio installation. I don't think. Did I have Fedora door twenty five on something? I know I had for door twenty six on the uh, AS Rock motherboard with the old e machines processor. Fedora twenty six DNF it. App install file. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's good that I was able to just put them over there. Might be some more that I didn't know. I was like, where? Couldn't find them, you know. Wouldn't be able to find them. Okay. Door 27 AS Rock Info. That might be useful. And, uh, Door 23 IBM Server. 23 server 23 Lenovo i5 I was thinking some of the commands I've been trying to find recently might be in here well, there's a bunch of info in there that would be some of my most recent info since I do all been doing all my work on Fedora 23 it might, even though it says for door 23, I might have put it in there without really thinking because that was the machine I was working on. You know? Okay, so I don't need any old stuff. Yum repos backup files for door 14. Oh. Okay. Um, I think maybe that's all I need. Door Linux Remixer. Hmm. No, that's not something. <clears throat> Don't remember what all would be in there. Fedora Start page. I think that's actually a. I think there's an HTML file to go with that somewhere. So, <clears throat> what I'm looking for is stuff that will help me set up my new Fedora 28 system. Okay. Uh, probably, normally I have this drive, you know, plugged in and ready to use. But since it's going to be several, maybe it could end up being several days. Of uh, there's some files all by themselves down here. We'll see what they were. There's a script. Let's see if it's already in there. I'll try to copy it and see if it. Yeah, it's already there. There's one that wasn't already there, okay. And oh my spins groups install script. Let's see. No, that's already in there. Fedora start page good info. Hmm. So I don't need it in there. think maybe I'm going to put it over there. So I'll do that and then I'll go find the folder. Where is it? Saw it. Dora start page good info. Hmm. 
without the folder with all the little images and everything, it's usually oh for door project start page two. Yeah, twelve oh eight sixteen. I mean, I don't know if it's actually something I need, but we'll see. Okay. Um Row 11. This one you can you can type and then it'll keep just like Crusader. You can key in this Thunar. I type in there and it uh, keeps whatever I type. Well, for a while, or does it keep it? It'll skip anything that's not Fedora. When I keep on paging down with it, uh, it went away. You got to keep going, I guess. If you just pause and start talking, then it lo it goes away. That little window at the bottom right. Fedora, Fedora, Fedora. It doesn't go to the next one, even though it says F E D O R A. Huh. It stops. Like there's. Huh. Okay. That's probably all I need. What else could I need? Yum. Oh, I typed it on top of that. Yum apps list. There's only one, and I got that folder. I'm pretty sure. It can be up there. Yeah. Okay. Yum. <coughs> DNF, I'm in the wrong one. DNF, group list, terminal output, there's some more. I might want to put those in there. Okay, they weren't there already, so that was a good idea. Yeah, see, now I'm doing organizing. Okay, there we go. That's see if you don't if you don't want to use a twin panel fire manager then I would use I would use Thunar then <clears throat> the only thing it doesn't do that I, I, I miss that that KJ CJ KJ KJ it does is it'll do a twin panel mode you can go to view and say uh, add another panel yeah, I don't think you can do it in here uh, and it works okay you can say copy to the other panel and so it's you know it's different. It's more like well, it's more like Windows Explorer, so if you like Windows Explorer, <coughs> but um, I, I've I've always every, all ever since I first started with computers had trouble with having mistakes in drag and drop. I don't like drag and drop at all. You my, my finger slips or I grab the wrong one or I don't know. It's just something about it for me. <coughs> so. Now I've got DNF install scripts, Don, well, Don Medical Info that was already there, um, Fedora 23, Lenovo i5 Info, 26 DNF install files, that, those really shouldn't be in separate folders, uh, 27 uh, ASRock 8300 Info, Fedora 28 Info, YUM apps install files, and then some of the files that were already there. Okay. Um, That should be exactly. It's probably all I need. Let's go look. Let's look into. Uh, <coughs> I don't think there's any downloads that I need. I wouldn't dare use TeamViewer or anything now. Anything that has you know haven't been scanned recently. I've scanned it once before, but I've added lots of files from different systems since then. So that's why I'm going to all this trouble to spend however long it takes, one to three days or whatever, to rescan this thing and make sure it's clean. Um, so hopefully, I already did this before on this machine with Clam AV. I only scanned, you know, the system itself. I didn't scan the backup drive that way. So hopefully it will make it, unless it really is not working right. Uh, I may be sorry. If it did like it did last night, work until sometime in the middle of the night and, and just the app quit. But I do kind of remember a bit Defender doing that before. So it could be something that, you know, just a crash that happens sometimes. Although I couldn't find, I wish I could have found a, a crash log or something. You know what? You goofball. I meant to open up Bitdefender again because there would have been logs in there. It does save logs. And, uh, I wonder if it saves them on the, uh, on 
the 32 gigabyte drive somewhere. Let me look and see. Trash found rescue log, rescue CD logs. Let's see. Organize it by the newest. Can't tell. Okay, I needed to drag it over anyway. 61518, 61518, oh, date modified, 42718, okay, 6158650. So it didn't have a log from yesterday. But there's a log from the last scan that it did a log, so it must have crashed and didn't get to write its log. Open with the mouse. Oh, it just says. Objects to be scanned run media live CD 32 gigabyte. Okay. Well, that didn't help. Um, I don't think it puts logs. Let's see. That's the virus, antivirus. Yeah, it doesn't put logs in the folder with the ISOs. Okay. So whatever logs are there are just in the. only see that one place for logs <coughs> so I'm, I'm, uh, <coughs> I think I don't, probably didn't need to close that yet um, well, actually I guess I did well where's my app oh didn't close oh well, no where is it well there it is clam AV okay there it is now is my um, Media, live user, 32 gigabyte. Yeah, so we won't mount it a while ago. So I don't want to scan my whole big backup drive right now. I just want to scan my uh, 32 gigabyte card. So I just want to say just report. And the updates are done. It's ready. Okay, so quarantine is empty. It should be. Okay. So I'm going to scan that, and then and then when I know it's clean, I'll be I'll be you know won't worry about booting it to anything for one thing. But the other thing is those files I just copied. I don't expect them to have anything, but I want to be extremely sh careful with my brand new system because I'm going to plug it into my new Fedora 28 system, and I'll bypass that, checking how long it's going to take, <coughs> um, so that I can. Um, Start building my install scripts and stuff. And oh, I gotta put the bookmarks on there. That's what I need. I really need my bookmarks. Just stop it. I think I can just do that, and it'll go right back. Okay, so I gotta open all this up again. Thirty-two gigabyte. Don's files. Documents is where I'm gonna want that. And I think it's gonna go back to where I had it at least. Okay, now then. Seagate expansion drive. That one didn't. And I want documents, bookmarks. I don't have a bookmarks folder, but that's all right, I guess. Need to order it. Yeah, well, it already is. Yesterday. That should be. AS Rock Mom. Okay, I want Lenovo i5, 627. Yeah, that would be it. I think I'll make a folder over here for bookmarks. Without the folders, I lose things. And long list of files, I just don't generally find stuff too well. There we go. Oops. AS Rock Moms. Okay, well, I was going to say AS Rock. I might want those, but no, I don't need them. Okay, that's all I need in my bookmark. Just that recent one. Anything else now that I might have forgot? Kind of looking. Well, these are things from, you know, my live sessions, most of them. There's one that could be put in those folders now. Okay. Um, bookmarks. That's one thing that was ho holding me up big time. I was searching my blog and couldn't find what I needed. And the, the actual scripts. Um, let's see what 
files I have. Men's groups, all that stuff. Don's apps. I've got plenty in there, and then DNF. Most of these are just. Uh, well, no, there's a script in there. Let's see, Fedora 23 install script. Do after a first installation. One I probably I think I used before. I don't think I'll. Uh, and that's the spins groups. Yeah, the one I made. That's an actual script. But I'm gonna make be making a new one. But here's what I want. I want the. Uh, that's all I want out of there is bin bash init dnf and y install. Well, I've got a bunch of hand type stuff in there. But uh, and of course you can't see that, so I won't bother pretending you can. Uh, but that's what I've been looking for. I need. I don't. Don't ever remember how to, uh, you know, write that to turn stuff into a script. Did I close? This time I think Clam may be actually closed. Let's see. I don't think it would do that, but it's not there now. It's, I don't know what I did different this time. I guess I hit close the X instead of the minimize button. So in the live system, it will close. Sure will. Well, okay. I have to start over. Maybe that's best in the long run. Let's see if it's uh, if it's ready. Still has its updates. Nothing in the quarantine. Okay. I'm going to go to run media. Live user, 32 gigabyte. Now, that's all I want to scan right now. Just report. I checked the quarantine already, didn't I? Just report. Scan. Okay, I'll let it kind of get started, and then I'll c cancel this calculating scan time. And this probably won't take a real long time, but because it, it probably, well, it probably has around 20 or 25 gigabytes on it. It won't be super quick. So what I'm thinking is I'm starving now for my lunch. And so I may just go probably stop this video and go get my lunch. That's the thing to do, I think. Because I don't want to wait any longer. <clears throat> and it's, of course, nothing wonderful about, especially on the camera, nothing to show here really, you know. I can't, can't show you anything. Can't see it. I'm looking over there at my preview. At least you get, I'm telling what I'm doing is, all I can do in this is, in this can, you know, when I can't do, that's why I went to so much trouble to try to do remote desktop, but it was not working. Spend more time in a live system, and it's a live system setting up remote desktop than you would. Uh, <coughs> I am kind of concerned about, no, I was going to say I might minimize it. Well, I can just click on a different, there we go. That way I can't, anyway, I, if I'm fiddling around and I forget which machine I'm on, you can view or execute. Forget which machine I'm on. I won't accidentally cancel that scan job. And I, I, can't, I didn't do that on the Bit Defender last night, but um, I was going to say I don't think there would really be any way I could have accidentally done that because I wasn't over at the keyboard, but I just. I don't know. I don't use that anymore. I had another keyboard just like this one that I used to keep plugged in. And, and a mouse as well that was over there in the rack. And you could do things, but it was hanging out of the front of the rack. And you could do things, but whatever machine you're on, you know, you, if you move that mouse, yeah, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so, uh, it's yeah, it's not connected. That keyboard is all wrapped up and not connected to anything now. Okay, so, um, no, I didn't actually... I, there wasn't an uh, extra desktop. I couldn't just click on another desktop, and I thought, well, I could minimize it. But then, when I wanted to go see what's going on, you know, I have to. And I'm, I was thinking in the middle of the night, if I want to see what's going on, I can just turn the monitor on and off, and not have to mess with the Mac. I don't think that anything happened to cancel it, or close it. I think it crashed. So, um, let that go. Um, We'll just be working away. Oh, yeah, you can't see it now because I'm not 
I'm not on the KVM switch over there. So I'm going to go away and get my lunch and all that junk. And uh, then I'll come back and start a new video when I get, uh, well, I'm going to get my, my big long, long scan started on the, uh, S, on the USB drive. But my and I can take my SD card once you know once it's clean showed to be clean or cleaned up, if if it's necessary, and put it in my new Fedora 28 on my Lenovo i5, and I can use my scripts and to, to get, you know have my access to my scripts to build my new script and my bookmarks to find things when I need to find things. Because that's an HTML follow my bookmarks, I can open that up in any browser. Okay, so I'll be back after a while. Oh, yeah, I don't have any music on here yet. Uh, I didn't. I probably could have copied that music on there, but I didn't think about it. But that's all right. I'm not going to go back and do that now. I can live without my intro and exit music for a while until I get to where I get it, get it done. Okay, one thing at a time. All right, I'll be back after a while. Uh, unless, you know, as long as things go as planned. So, uh, see you later.